So let's start with cost minimization problem. Okay. So basically, it's a two plant. Uh, you know, you have you have two plants. Okay, and uh, you want to produce y units of output. Okay. So uh, suppose you have access to two plants. Okay. Uh, the technology in the first plant is actually given by this cost function, c1 y1 equal to y1. What does this mean? That you know, if you use plant one to produce five units, then the cost that you that you're going to incur will be five. Is that okay? And the second plant is c2 y2 equal to let's say y2 square by two. Okay. So basically, you know, in the second plant, if you if you choose to produce one unit, it will cost you half. If you choose to produce use the second plant uh, to produce uh, four units is going to cost you 16 by 2, which is 8. Is that clear? Make sense? Understood? Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to solve this problem that let's say I want to produce Y units. I have access to these two technologies, these two cost functions, these two plants. And, uh, you know, your objective is to actually uh, produce it as at a minimum possible cost. Okay. Uh, so obviously you know now you'll you'll be thinking okay what should i do like should i use just one plant out of these two or should i maybe just split this uh you know in in the two plants so that we minimize cost is that clear okay so minimize with respect to y1 y2 okay uh y1 plus y2 square by two okay i want to minimize this Subject to the constraint that I want to produce, let's say, y units of output. Okay, so basically, I'm interested in uh, figuring out the solution for every y. So, solution will now be a function of y. Is that clear to everyone? Uh, so, let's just uh, solve this problem. Okay, and obviously, we have non negativity constraints. Okay, so I want to solve this problem. Okay. So I'm going to first convert. This is a two-variable optimization problem, but but because we have an equality constraint here, we have a way to convert it into a one-variable problem. Okay, because I can always substitute uh, y1 as y minus y2, for example. Okay, and then then it will be just in you know the, the, the objective will be just in terms of one variable. Okay, so I'm going to use that and convert it into a one-variable optimization problem. Okay, so let's uh, do this. Okay. Uh, so minimize. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I'm going to convert this into one variable optimization problem. There are two ways to convert it. Either you can substitute in place of y two y minus y one, or you can substitute in place of y one y minus y two. Okay, whichever way you like, it's going to give you the same solution. Doesn't matter. Okay, fine. So let me do this this way. Y two. So I'm going to convert it into y2. Okay, so let me write y1 as y minus y2 plus y2 square by 2, right? Okay, and uh, notice that y2, the maximum value that y2 can take is y. So basically, the maximum am amount that you can produce in plant 2 is basically if you produce everything in plant 2, right? So the highest is y, right? So that's the highest possibility. Do you agree? The lowest possibility is you produce nothing in plant two. Zero. So notice that this problem will take care of everything that is given over here. Okay, so how will we do this? Well, so again, you have multiple ways to do this. One is close interval method. Okay, so what is a close interval method? Again, let me recall. Uh, let me remind you. So there, you have to just find the critical points in the interval zero to y, and compare it with the endpoints. What are the endpoints in this case? Zero and y. Okay, and then compare the cost. Okay, and then figure out whichever is lower. Is that clear? Okay, uh, and that's one way. Now, if you see this particular problem, you know, if you want to take the double derivative, actually. You see, this is actually a convex objective. The objective is convex. So you can also use the derivatives, uh, you know, uh, straight away to do this problem without using the closed interval method. 
Okay, uh, so if you if you just just take the double derivative of this with respect to y two, what are we going to get? One, right? The double derivative is one which is positive. So if it is positive, it is convex. It is a convex function. Is that okay? So so which approach do you want me to use? Double derivative. Okay, fine. So let's use the double derivative convex. Let's just try and sketch the graph and let's visualize the solution and then we'll we'll just write the solution. Is that fine? Okay, fine. Okay, so what what is the derivative? Let me first write the derivative. Derivative is minus one plus y two. Okay, minus one plus y two. Okay, fine. This is the derivative. Now, do you agree when y two is less than one? When y2 is less than 1, the function is falling. Because it's negative, the derivative is negative, so the function is falling. And when y2 is greater than 1, the function is going up, rising. Yes, because y, when y2 is greater than 1, the derivative is positive. And when y2 is equal to 1, we have, you know, whatever critical point or whatever you want to call it. Okay, Is that fine? Okay, fine. So let me just sketch the graph. Let me just sketch the graph of this. Okay, using the derivative, just using the derivative, I'll try and sketch the graph of this. Okay, because that's going to give me the sense of you know what, where the solution should be. Because once I have the sketch and I have I have any constraint, then all that I have to do is just pick the point where the uh, where we have the least cost. That's all that we want to do, right? Okay, so let's let's just do this. Okay, it's actually straightforward. Okay. Uh, So always on the horizontal axis, put whatever variable you are choosing. So here, what are you choosing? Y2. So I'll put Y2 on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis because I'm going to plot this objective. So I'm going to put the cost. Okay. So let's just plot this. And for the time being, let me ignore this Y. Okay. I'm just ignoring it for the time being, but then I'll, I'll bring it on. Okay. Is that okay? So let's sketch this. Now, when y2 is 0, what is the cost? It's y, right? When y2 is 0, the cost is y. Okay. So it's maybe somewhere here. So what do you think will happen? If I if I if I just look at this for y2 less than 1, do you agree the graph is falling? Because it's minus 1 plus y2. Okay. And when y when y2 is 1, when y2 is 1, what is this value? No, it's not zero. This is zero, I agree. But what is this value? It's y y minus uh, one plus half, which is y minus half, right? So it's just basically somewhere here. Well, it depends on what y is, but but the key thing is that it's it's below this. Okay, that's that's what matters. Okay, so y do y minus half will be you know uh, the value where the function reaches the bottom. Okay, and then it goes up like this. Is that clear to everyone? So you know, if you, this is just going to give you the sense of how the graph looks. Okay, now once you have this, we have to figure out where is this minimum. Okay, now this is telling you straight away that okay, choose y do equal to one. Okay, but the problem here is this: we I haven't told you what y is. You know, it it, it may depend on y. Are you getting my point? Okay, so let's say if y is greater than one, then there is no problem. Let's say y is 10. So if y is 10, then the solution works because you know you're gonna say y2 will be y2 will be one and y1 will be nine. Do you agree? No problem at all. But what if I ask you to produce half a unit? Will you still say that I'm gonna use plant two in capacity one? Will will you still do that? No, right? Because I'm asking you to produce just Half a unit, and you're gonna say, okay, let's produce uh, one unit in plant two. You know, that's that's something that, that's definitely not cost minimizing. Do you agree? So basically, here the solution will depend on y. What if y is less than one? Okay, so let's just so so let me first write the solution for y greater than one. Are you all convinced that for y greater than one, we have already found the solution? All of you? Yes. Okay. So let me write the solution. So y two star 
is a function of y okay and it is equal to what it is equal to 1 if y is greater than or equal to 1 so if i'll ask you to produce one or more units then you will employ plant 2 up to one unit and what about plant 1 how much how much uh, uh, how are you going to employ plant 1 in this case what is y1 star y y minus one right i mean if, if i'll ask you to produce y units you are producing one unit in plant plant two so obviously you'll produce remaining in plant one okay so if y is greater than or equal to one okay now there is only one case left which is y less than one what if i'll ask you to produce less than one unit yeah so basically if i'll ask you to produce less than one unit you know then obviously still the bottom of the graph will be at one i agree but since the constraint is between zero and y okay the constraint is between zero and y you have to choose y to between zero and y where is this least at y right so y2 will be y something that keeps on falling in the entire interval where is the minimum at the end point the rightmost end point yes or no okay so that's it you have written the solution okay so let me give you two pictures in one picture graph looks like this this is one and this is y so you want to choose y2 between zero and y where the cost is minimum and the other is this picture okay you want to choose y2 between 0 and y where the cost is minimum so where is the cost minimum when you choose y2 between 0 and y at y that's it yes or no these are the two pictures right one is y greater than one the other is y less than one when y is greater than one you know that one is the minimum and when y is less than one you know that uh, the minimum is exactly at y that's it so this is not just basically this is something it's not just a graph of cost of producing y2 units this is actually the graph of cost of producing y2 units in plant 2 and y minus y2 units in plant 1 this is a combined graph this is a combined i did i say that i have plotted y2 square by 2 did i plot y2 square by 2 no right I plotted y minus y2 plus y2 square by 2, which is the total cost of producing y units, by the way. As a function of, you know, different, different ways in which you can employ plant 2 in different, different capacities. So obviously you want to reach the bottom of this graph. Yes or no? Are you getting my point? Have you all understood this? So basically, let me just again give you the interpretation of this. So suppose you choose to produce this much in plant two. Then you are saying that you are automatically producing this much in plant one. And the total cost is given by this height. If you choose to produce this much in plant two, then you are automatically producing this much in plant one. And the total cost is this height. Are you getting a point? So that's what I've plotted here. Is this clear? Okay, so basically the graph is actually only applicable till y. This graph doesn't make any sense to the right of y. The reason is because to the right of y, to the right of y, what you're saying is you are producing more than y units in plant two, and you are using the other plant in negative capacity. That doesn't make any sense. Are you getting it? So effectively, if you really think about it, this particular graph should be only applicable till y you know it's just, it doesn't make any sense beyond y because we just want to figure out between zero and y you know what should be the capacity in which i should be using plant two and plant one right okay is that okay now once you have the solution quickly give me the answer suppose i uh, i am the manager and uh, you know i ask you that uh, you know i want to minimize cost you have access to these two technologies 
can you tell me how much in what capacity should i use plant one in what capacity should i use plant two so on day one i ask you this question okay i want to produce 10 units i want to, to the total production should be 10 units so how should you how will you report you know what will you report huh nine and one, nine and one. so you're going to simply use this formula now that you have a uh, function okay you're going to simply say okay produce nine nine units in 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 uh in uh, plant one and produce uh, one unit in plant two next day i i tell you that okay i want to just produce half a unit today i don't want to produce lo a lot we, we already have a lot of uh, uh inventory okay we don't want to produce a lot so can you uh, and we still have the same technologies okay so we are not changing it so can you tell me what what will be your answer if i tell you that okay i just want to produce half a unit so how should i use these two plants uh, yeah exactly so you want to say using this formula you're just going to simply plug in here. You know that uh, you should be just employing plant two, uh, you know, and not plant one at all. So you, so you're, you're just, just going to say y one is zero and y two is half. Is that okay? So you don't have to redo this problem again and again once you have solved this for every y. Is that clear to everyone? So that's the advantage. Using the variables help, isn't it? Okay. So if you want to do the same task over and over again, you know, you don't want to, and let's say it requires a similar procedure. Then automate it, you know, rather than uh, rather than you know redoing it by hand again and again. You know, so that's like automation. Is this fine? Okay, so you have solved this problem for every Y now. Okay, and that that's just really good.